live. There we are. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Hi, everyone. This is Chicho. Welcome to another live stream. Today, we're doing a drop in math tutoring session for the 2020 year, and it's number 12 since January. We, we're doing one of these things. And it's basically a drop in math tutoring session, open discussion. I'm making myself available for people. Um, if they have math questions about high school mathematics, we can deal with it, right? Brett Kelly, how are you doing? Good evening. Good afternoon for from my end anyway, and good evening to you. Hope you're doing well. Um, aside from that, uh, our little intro, I'm on Patreon. Patreon.com backslash Chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O. If you want to follow this work, Patreon is a great way to follow this work. If you want to support this work, Patreon is a fantastic way to support this work. We're live streaming on Twitch. Twitch.com backslash Chicho live. <laughs> I had a Chicho live for Twitch. Uh, and um, basically, this is where we live stream and then we upload the videos to YouTube and BitChute and maybe in the future to other uh, platforms as well on oh non oh no no tojo oh no no tojo welcome to a live stream <laughs> nice to have you here uh i do announce these live streams 30 minutes before we go live on twitter gavs mines vk and allo and all the links will be in the description of this video okay for a lot of live streams we're going to be uploading the audio to soundcloud right um, when i'm recording with a lapel mic uh, these math modes we're not uploading yet we might at some point when i do a little upgrade to the standing mic and stuff like this or get some a wireless lapel mics happening chavava cha cha how are you doing you from the u.s i'm in canada sam hit my man how are you doing welcome welcome grand prix hey chicho hope you're having a smooth day having a fantastic day so far nice day had good good math discussions with students and we're doing more mathematics now so life is pretty sweet and it's sunny out here and grand prix thank you for hosting by the way awesome uh and it's sunny here so I'll actually set up a beach umbrella inside the house let me show you <laughs> it's the end of it so so that way the sun is not gonna totally glare out the whiteboard right moss how are you doing hey hey keep them eyes dry that i know Oof, crazy crazy sam hit i did not expect what happened last stream I'm blur. I'm right now supposed to be bad luck, but it's pretty good luck so far. <laughs> As for the videos, we're going to be uploading these to YouTube and BitChute. Everything goes to BitChute, and as much as possible goes to YouTube. Uh, as far as we, you know, as long as uh, the sensors don't deplatform us, right? Heat index days 105 degrees Fahrenheit in Oklahoma. Woo -hoo. Hot, hot. How's the humidity there, by the way? which please how are you doing i just want to thank you after talking to me about my uh this kala kalia oh, i can't even pronounce that uh, i was able to do my first mental math thank you oh you're very welcome you're very welcome i'm glad it helped out and there's a few people on chat giving advices as well so that's fantastic that's awesome good to hear good to hear and thank you for coming here uh to mention it as well i'm glad we're on the right path anyway um, i know it's helped out my students so that's fantastic awesome uh, i'm going to take these things down over here uh, that way we've got a clear board or a clear screen and if there's any math questions anyone ever you know has we can definitely deal with it or you know open discussion we can go wherever you guys want almost wherever you guys want uh, Cha. so i wake up this morning at nine and start doing english and french work until uh 1300 hours so 1 p.m and i relax to math twitch stream i really miss school ah nice yeah there's some people that are missing it some people are not uh ed learning is fantastic learning is a is a good thing makes you makes you feel good 
uh, from what, what I, you know, the way I feel about it. It's hard work, by the way. Learning is hard work. It, it, you know, you could, you might have to put in a lot of hours to learn a certain concept, but once you learn that concept, whew, rock and roll, right? Mil, me. Milinja, 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 Milinja. How are you doing? Hope you are well, Chicho. And the same for everyone else watching. And you as well. Thank you for popping into a stream. Graham, how are you doing? I need to keep walking, but it's just so hot. It's unpleasant. Oh, is it? No, oh, oh. here is really nice. But tell you the truth, gang, I miss the hot. I really do miss the extreme hot. 68% humidity last night. Actually, that's not bad. 68% is on the humid side, but that's not bad. Ripper, how you doing? Greetings, Chicho. How are you, brother? Chat, how are you? I'm doing good. Two days ago, you made me cry. <laughs> In a good way. So much love. Wow, crazy. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, not Joe. Oh, no, not Joe. That's what it is oh no not joe hope everyone is doing well eduardo how are we doing welcome welcome monty ray hi 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 how are you how hot does it get there it doesn't get that hot here it gets uh in where i am it gets about uh, hottest 30 celsius uh, like and that's pushing hot right 30 32 seldom does it go above 30 30 degrees celsius or whatever that is in fahrenheit um but I grew up until I was 10 years old in a desert in southern Iran. And it used to get so hot there that the asphalt on the ground used to become malleable. So as kids, we could go walk around and put sticks into the asphalt, into the road, and it would stick up. Uh, it was good. I lived, with, uh, I lived in a place where there was tarantulas and scorpions, and I lived in a desert. Uh, I think it was sort of attached to the Arabian desert or something. So it was crazy hot. I loved it. I want to move, move to the Pacific uh, Northwest. Texas is brutal. Yeah. Pacific Northwest, though, man. Living in the temperate rainforest is a pretty sweet thing. I can honestly tell you. That's absolutely amazing. Have you ever seen a moose? Yeah. 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 I've seen a moose. I've seen elk. I've seen bear. Uh, I haven't seen a cougar. And I usually, I'm pretty sure a cougar has seen me. Because when you see a cougar, the odds are you're in trouble, okay? So he's gotten close, or he or she has gotten close enough for you to be able to see him. Uh, so in general, if you're in the forest, we have a lot of cougars in BC. Uh, they, they're like cats, right? They are cats. They, they track, they hide, and stuff like this. So you have to be careful. So I've never seen a cougar. Uh, I've seen a grizzly in nature. Grizzlies grizzlies are big grizzlies are huge right uh sam hit i know this might be uh, simple but can you go over the concept of real numbers please for sure we do i know you've seen murderous raccoons, <laughs> murderous raccoons. <laughs> and by the way the raccoons the raccoon video raccoon fighting in a tree that's my most popular video right now it's getting a lot of hits right when we moved into this new place, we had a couple of raccoons making love on a branch, on a tree. So there was, there should have been a video coming out following that, raccoons having sex in a tree. But uh, when we're recording the video, it was just all of a sudden we're like, oh wow, while we're signing a lease, by the way, and it didn't record. We didn't get the recording. Maybe they come back and make some love. Ripper Chicho, I don't apologize. Haha, <laughs> I'm glad my words, along with the chat echoing them, were able to move you in a way that you see the impact uh, you have on us. After all, that's the goal of it. That is the goal. That is the goal, Ripper. And I appreciate it. It was fun, amazing. I tried to go read the chat to calm me down. I read the chat. It was like, oh my God, this is too much. I couldn't walk away because we're live streaming. Uh, lots of rain today. Elder God. But I don't move move all day. Lots of rain. Oh, you move a lot, man. 500 push-ups and... Uh, or 1,500 push-ups. So we're going to do real numbers for sure. Okay. Moose are actually pretty huge. They're gigantic, moose. And they could be mean. 
you know you have to be careful around moose mooses can be like bears are pretty chill right mooses uh, are to a certain degree more dangerous than bears okay really didn't know this until recently yeah mooses are gigantic hey chicho find them in a stream hello the trash man how are you doing i saw you pop into the discord and you asked me about discord and you were on the uh what do you call it premiere a couple of days ago so welcome to our live stream uh ripper chicho but i will absolutely take my receipt and look you uh body slam <laughs> let you body slam me nice <laughs> one day right oh my god i don't even know if i could do it there's no way i'm not in shape to be able to do anything like that man you would rip me apart twirl me and throw me out of the ring hey everyone hope all is well trash man uh it's time to chill with chicho nice hey hannah how you doing grab chicho i know i've asked but does it snow a lot there uh not too much on the coast itself uh interior you go a little bit in yeah it snows a lot right so it's we got a lot of microclimates in the Pacific Northwest. Lots of microclimates in the Pacific Northwest. In the Pacific Northwest, I'm moving into a new space in three weeks. Just have to sign my lease and pay my bills. Nice. What made you fall in love uh, with Math Chicho? Um. What made me fall in love with math? What really did it for me was teaching it. Uh, when I got into teaching math that's when I really began to understand mathematics I always had an appreciation for math I liked math I I realized how much power it gave me right when I was studying in high school and university right that's why I ended up getting my math minor I always knew it was powerful and it was it was, it was a power that I would like to have it's like playing a video game right do you want that magic sword that annihilates everyone yeah of course you do right you'd be silly not to acquire look do the work you need to do to acquire that magic sword to be able to slay whatever creature you encounter math is the same level right but i didn't really fall in love with it the way i have uh, until i started teaching it so for me it's teaching mathematics that i am in love with i guess you could say uh, last year i was on a canoe vacation in sweden the double decker bus we were in taking us back home hit a moose oh full speed oh annihilated the bus in the middle of the night one of the scariest experiences of my life luckily nobody was seriously injured wow yeah mooses are gigantic they're, they're horse size right and i've hit a deer going at 120 clicks an hour in a car <sighs> takes out the car <laughs> mooses are like cows <laughs> on stilts yeah three three thousand congrats yeah do, do, oh lots of chats okay so, um, guys i'm gonna doing math nerd yeah perfect citizen nice uh i came to say hi i was super busy and i will be tomorrow taco operator thank you very much for popping up to say hi we're going to deal with the real number set right now i'm also from the uk nice lots of uk friends here which is fantastic have yet to see a tutoring session on twitch just here here off curiosity awesome it's isle isles one welcome to our math stream VC, how are you doing? Hey, Chicho, do you tutor set theory at all? Um, like uh, cardinality uh, uh, and proofs and stuff. Um, not really. We don't encounter that too much. I've done a little bit in the past because it was part of the curriculum, but over 10 years ago, they took it out. So I haven't had practice with it. Yes, Chicho, perfect timing. Starsky, how are you doing? How's life? Warwitch love these math streams awesome starsky uk uk Chicho. gina how are you doing how are you doing should we talk about the real number set now real number set by the way i got a couple of videos out there if you do chicho real number set uh i used to have it all in one video when we did it but that was loaded on believe it or not google had a website where you could load on google video but they took that out right chicho real number set so on youtube it's not on bit yet but on youtube it's broken down into two parts okay there is uh it's the third video i put out uh in mathematics third and fourth videos okay so let me oh that's on video here it is here's part three here's part one of the real number set 
okay now keep in mind this is literally the third video I ever shot of me recording of me doing mathematics and me being in front of the camera okay like literally this is me at the beginning stages of creating math content the third video I put out it could have been even the first video because I probably made my intro video before I made this video so this was possibly the first video I ever shot of me being in front of the camera maybe okay there's part one there's part two they used to be together but Google took out their Google video platform right so all that stuff got deleted Google uh, hey Chicho Lark how are you doing Midlands people from Midlands Park da, 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 da. buried with work again so I will be lurking Catholic traditionalists no worries hope uh, hope the work it goes well okay ch -ch -ch -ch. serious life question uh oh assassin on we serious life question should I study well in high school such as uh, act and sat over summer and do you regret studying or not studying well in high school and would you regret and do you regret in high school uh, look high school sucks for most people especially now a lot of people don't like high school it's school to prison pipeline whatever you want to call it right indoctrination you're in a big class size uh peers are crap uh there's a lot of violence there's a lot of drugs there's a lot of stupidity the teachers uh, you can say all that stuff right irrelevant it is your responsibility to educate yourself if that means when you're going to high school there's certain powers you have to accumulate in life okay you need to be able to learn how to read and write you need to be able to learn how to do mathematics you need to learn history but not indoctrination from centralized education system i tell people as soon as you graduate high school for the first two to four years of your life you should be re-educating yourself right learning about your history looking into english start doing some writing just either creative or analytical writing look at mathematics uh, just learn what school didn't teach you right because you're in the learning mode right so after two to four years after high school you should be educating yourself into what school didn't teach you right so uh, in your question do I regret learning no I don't regret learning was there a lot of waste of time yes there was uh, was there anything I could do about it not really not at the time not with what I knew right uh, do you regret i don't know ba, ba, ba. that's about it that's all i can say about that right you look so much younger i look so much it's a goatee <laughs> if i if i change the color of this not really but hey <laughs> that was put out in 2007 by the way that's 13 years ago right fellow teacher nice we will be creating first uh custom edited videos this summer as well good luck good luck good luck what does the w number stand for yeah we'll do we'll do gina good good thank you and uh, how are you oh yeah gina. Ch -ch still Ch chicho your kd ratio video on graphing did an excellent job in introducing my little brother third grade to graphing awesome awesome miro i'm so happy about that that's the kill to death ratio by the way in gaming right we did a little stream and we looked at ratios and stuff and it makes sense and you're like Oh, that's it awesome I have a law from there ba, 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 ba. if you have X equals that what is the confuse no calculator is that going to be a trick trick number Evan uh, interesting Chicho have you ever made a video along the lines things that high school didn't teach you um it's probably incorporated into all of my videos Miro right it's probably incorporated into all of my videos I will be trying to uh, trying to channel the good math vibes from this stream applying some fairly gnarly math in the project I am working on as I listen awesome Catholic traditionalists if it's shareable share it on our discord page right no it's not that would be a long video why not if you're confused how do you know if it's wrong 
<laughs> okay, let's deal with a real number set, right? Let's deal with a real number set. The way I explain the real number set to people, by the way, a lot of these videos I'm making, uh, they're geared towards teaching what it is we're talking about, but they're geared towards teaching how to teach what we're talking about. And I, this is exactly the way I teach it to my students because once the kids, my students know the angle that I'm coming from, why I'm explaining things this way, what it all means, then they learn easier, right? Because they know why, which is the first thing that everybody wants to know. Why? Why do we have to do this? Why do we learn this? Hello, Mr. Hezekiah. How are you doing? Like we say, don't go gray, go pink. <laughs> So take a look at this thing the real number set the real number set most people would look at it this way right you see this thing you see this thing you see this thing you see this thing and then they break this down into two equal parts right and then they put real number here real number set and then they put what's called the natural numbers whole numbers integers rational numbers irrational numbers here i'm going to put them in but we're going to explain this a little bit further right so we're going to do this and we're going to go natural numbers we're gonna go whole numbers we're gonna go integers and rational numbers they call q in my part of the world anyway some some places i think they call it z right i i you know it's rational numbers we'll write them down here so you see what they are too right and then in mathematics if you want to say not rational not a certain variable you put a line over top of the letter so if Q means rational a line on top of a Q means not rational shorthand in mathematics right that's all it is okay so the way I explain this and the way I'm gonna explain this to you guys is this right this is the way you have to look at the real number set the real number set is human evolution sort of explaining to you where how we have come to be where we are in understanding numbers right in understanding mathematics we write z so for q you guys write z so q could be z and it could be not z rational and not rational thank you very much lots okay all right mean <laughs> use right right so take a look at this thing so if this is an explanation of where we have come from, right? Let's break it down into something that's tangible, something that people can relate to, right? Uh, Isles one, Chicho, there should be a setting in your webcam setting. Depending on the computer, it could be in the various places. You can turn off the autofocus function. Uh, I'm noticing it is getting in and out of focus, which would be a pain for future editing. Uh, yeah, it does. It does get into, it does do that. But one thing I do, I bring things close. Like for example, here's my snack today. It's sort of melted, it's sunny here, so it's hot. This is uh, hemp hearts, right? Take a look. This is hemp hearts on top of steel cut oats breakfast that i made with fruit inside fruit and nuts so this is steel cut oats with apple cherries um dates i got pumpkin seeds in there and walnuts in there and i put honey in here so what i do i sort of mix this thing around all right and that's the reason i haven't turned off the autofocus by the way uh, because I bring things close to the camera and whatnot. Thank you very much for the bits. Oh no, not Joe. Let's see, take a look. It's very delicious. Hopefully you can focus. Sometimes it has a hard time. Check that out, right? Super delicious. Super delicious. Okay. Look at you being healthy. <laughs> it's very good and I usually when I make this I make a gigantic pot and I eat it all day so the odds are today I'm just eating that right oats are so good yeah too many carbs 
Too many carbs, Elder God. <laughs> Look at you being all you know all I want my next whiskey coke with a bowl of shit down. <laughs> Nate. Very tasty. Very tasty. Very tasty. 420 per cup hemp. Ha <laughs> ha. Nice. Hemp hearts on a ham. Nice. So take a look at this thing. Consider this to be human evolution. The real number set, right? So just imagine if we were, you know, hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, right? If we were living in a village, right? And just imagine there was a village of all sheep herders, right? That's what I use in my explanation in those videos, right? I say if you were living in a village hundreds of years ago, thousands of years ago, whatever years ago it was, because we really don't know human history that well, right? Well, you could make snacks for inspiration. It, it, we, really, human history, we we're continuously keep on finding out that we have been on this planet in a form of a civilization or tribal community for not thousands of years, tens of thousands of years, but hundreds of thousands of years, right? So however far back you want to go, because if, if you look at some of the structures that we have in the world right now, right, from the Aztecs to the Mayans to the Egyptian pyramids to some of the some of the structures in Asia and Europe and the Americas, some of the uh, indigenous structures that they built with the sort of lining things up with the equinoxes and stuff like this. There was mathematics involved in that, right? So take yourself back to a time where you lived in a village and in a village of sheep herders, right? So everybody in that village had sheep and if you lived in a village there was usually a central point where you know tavern or whatnot and this was your village and everybody in that village is a sheep herder right these are my stick figures they're they're not very good right oh this poor guy doesn't have legs right so just imagine everybody in that village was a sheep herder right and whenever you wanted to get together you came into the village right and let's say every Saturday night, everyone everyone went into the village and they partied, right? You got, oh, everyone's partying, light up the place and dance, right? And then you would sit around the table and you talk about life. And what do sheep herders talk about? Well, they talk about sheep, right? So all these people would sit around the table and go, oh, hey, Joe, how many sheep do you got? Oh, man, one of our sheep just had a sheep, right? We got a little baby lamb. I think sheep is lamb. Little lambs are baby sheep, right? I think so anyway. Right? Oh, we just we we can now say we have five sheep, right? And then Bob over here says, "Oh, wow, that's great! I only have three sheep." And you know, Fred over here, or Jonathan, or Margaret, or Elizabeth, or whoever it was, sits around and says, "Hey, I got eight sheep, right?" So through that concept of sheep herding, you would have something called natural numbers where people had one two three four five six seven eight nine ten as many sheep as possible right that we would call natural numbers right so natural numbers would be one two three dot 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 if every family member in that village was a sheep herder everybody would have at least one sheep and that we would call the natural numbers the counting numbers we call them right now just imagine there was some Joe Blow from outside the village that do, 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 made its way to the village. It was a passerby who was going through, right? Maybe he came from a different village. He came from a different village and goes to this village and Saturday night goes to the party house. Do, do, everyone's partying, dancing, they sit around the table, they start talking. John, Fred, Margaret, Elizabeth, they start talking about their sheep. And they turn to this guy because there's one big gigantic round table. They sit around, talk to this guy and go, hey buddy, how many sheep do you have? And the guy goes, sheep. He goes, I got no sheep. Zero sheep. Now for these village of sheep herders, if they were living in a bubble, right, and they didn't know the concept of of anything outside of their village right they couldn't understand what having no sheep meant right they would go what do you mean no sheep right what if you have no sheep then what do you do right so this guy would go well I don't have any sheep I'm a blacksmith right they go blacksmith he goes yeah you know those metal things you buy you put at the bottom of your horses 
feet if you have any horses or the hammers you use and stuff like that so these guys it would just go what 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 after a while they would begin to understand that there was something beyond beyond the natural numbers right and this would have been a bigger subset than this right so these natural numbers one two three four five six seven eight nine ten sheep whatever sheep all of a sudden beyond that there would be something called zero sheep the concept of zero would be introduced right now as because this goes beyond the village capacity right it's another bigger subset right because maybe let's erase this these guys would go oh you know what outside of our village right there's a bigger area where there's people that have no sheep they're blacksmiths right they have zero sheep and all of a sudden you would go okay let's call that the whole numbers and we include the number zero with the whole numbers hopefully you can see that right you include the number zero with the whole numbers what i'm going to do i'm going to erase this i'm going to make it a little bit bigger because i'm going to write some stuff in there okay let's take this down let's make it a little bit bigger so it gives us a little wiggle room right and i'm apologies about not reading the chat but i want to make this thing flow properly okay uh, i don't want it to be interrupted too much so my apologies gang okay so let's assume we got this All right what's this called the real number set All right what do we got we're going to cut it down the middle but keep in mind this doesn't mean they have equal number of numbers here as there is here it's just a visualization right and then we have the natural numbers right? natural numbers and these are one two three dot 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 goes on forever and then we got the whole numbers right whole numbers we got zero one two dot 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 okay and then we got the integers integers and then we got rational numbers which is also written as Z and then we got irrational numbers which is written with a bar on top right <laughs> right so the whole numbers includes the natural numbers right it just adds the number zero it's a larger area it's a larger set right that's the whole numbers now just imagine these people finally after a certain amount of time they wrap their head or heads around what it means for people to have no sheep right they might have different jobs right they might have different things they do so there's zero sheep involved and zero means a lot we'll come back to this by the way it's huge okay that's why we broke it or mathematicians they broke it into a new subset because it was such a gigantic step in our understanding of the world and understanding in mathematics right and zero existed before it was just us defining what the number zero meant right now just imagine humans are evolving right population is growing there's travel happening and after a few hundred years right all of a sudden some person enters the scene which is outside of this region outside of the set right and goes to the village party house on Saturday night right Liz how are you doing party house and they dance they drink and they're gonna eat food they all sit around the table the big table that they have and Bob Fred Elizabeth Margaret and all these people start talking about their sheep and they also talk to this blacksmith or whoever else that was here maybe there's sheep herders here too right there's a sheep herder from here that went in there they asked this sheep herder how many sheep do you have right so they start talking about their sheeps and their blacksmith and people that don't have any sheep 
right? There's people that do other things that don't have any sheep, right? They talk about the numbers zero, right? And then they come around, they ask this guy, hey, you, how, how many sheep do you have? He goes, oh, I don't have any sheep. Oh, they go, oh, you don't have any sheep. You must be a blacksmith. And he goes, no, I'm not a blacksmith. I'm, I'm not interested in blacksmithing. I'm a, I'm a merchant. They go, what? What's a merchant? They go, well, I don't have any sheep, but I promised some people that I would deliver them sheep, so I'm negative to sheep, right? I need to get my hands on a couple of sheep so I can deliver it to somebody because I made them a promise there was going to be a trade, a deal happening, right? And they go, what? You want to, you want to, you got negative sheep. You want to buy sheep. So you want to buy somewhere a sheep. They go, yeah, that's because I owe somebody sheep. They go, oh, what does that owe mean? It goes, well, it's negative. And all of a sudden, these people get introduced to the concept of negative numbers, right? That, which is what integers are. Integers are negative natural numbers, right? But not just negative natural numbers. This subset, which includes these guys now, like a bigger subset, more information. These people here introduce, include the natural numbers, include the number zero, as well as negative all numbers, right? So integers are negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, dot, 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 right? And these guys go, wow, there's people that there are negative numbers, negative sheep. They need sheep. They cancel out positive sheep. If I have two sheep, they need two sheep. That means together we have zero sheep. What? Which includes this guy, this guy, and the negative integers, right? So it takes a few hundred years, however long it takes, for this tribe to really be able to digest negative whole numbers, right? And then they start to realize how to deal with negative whole numbers in equations in their mathematics, right? Make sense? That's where we are right now. And keep in mind, integers includes whole numbers and natural numbers because this is human evolution. If we're evolving, we're not releasing information as we acquire additional information on top of that. We're building it, right? This is building the information, right? Well, what happens beyond this? Well, beyond this, there's people out here, people out here, that maybe live in the city or something, right? Includes all of these people out here, right? Their world is getting bigger and bigger. Human evolution, the world is getting bigger and bigger. These people come along on a Saturday night, right? They see this party, they see the lamb on the, what do you call that thing where you twirl it around and everybody's going around cooking it and and eating it on the on the spit on the spit fire is that what you call it where people are eating and they're going wow we've never seen this before we don't have this let's 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 buy some some of this product and take it back to our village right and eat it up right but a whole sheep is crazy we want to buy half a sheep right so these guys are sitting around the table they talk about their sheep they talk about the number zero they talk about people needing sheep whole sheep whole negative numbers right but then these guys come along and say hey listen that, that's a gigantic sheep you guys grow good sheep here right raise good sheep but we don't we can't do anything with the whole sheep it's too much we don't have the capacity to refrigerate it and we don't have enough people to eat it before it goes bad so i want half a sheep and these people go what in the world is half a sheep no one's ever bought half a sheep from us right what are you going to do with half a sheep they go well we're going to cook it up they go oh why don't you just cook up a whole sheep and he explains again and go oh, okay half a sheep i don't know sure i guess we could sell you half a sheep and that's what rational numbers are right what rational numbers are they would have explained to people that rational numbers are numbers that repeat or terminate that's what have been that's what have what they explain to everybody in school what rational numbers are these numbers are numbers that repeat or terminate right repeat or end 
I don't like that definition. Right? It's working definition. It's okay. But let's take this guy out. Right? What are rational numbers? Rational numbers are are numbers that you can write as fractions of integers. So rational numbers are fractions of integers. And fractions of integers tend to end and repeat, right? So for example, the number two is a natural number, but when, when something is a natural number, it's also a whole number, it's also an integer, it's also a rational number. Why is it a rational number? Because a number two you can write as two over one, right? One over three, negative seven over five, zero point three. What's zero point three? Zero point three is three over ten. What's zero point three repeating? 0 0.3 repeating is 1 over 3, right? So any number that repeats or terminates is considered to be a rational number and belongs in this subset, right? Now, rational numbers, as you can tell, if it's a number 2, it can be a natural number, but 2 over 1 is also a rational number. So whenever you're trying to uh, explain what a number is, which subset it belongs to, all you have to do is take it down to the lowest subset that it can go, right? In the pillar, right? So if someone asks you what the number two is, you say it's a natural number. Because that implies it's also a whole number, integer, and a rational number. If someone asks you what the number zero is, you go down, you go down, you hit the number zero, where the number zero is defined, it's a whole number, it's not a natural number. And when it's a whole number, it's also an integer and a rational number. And a real number right so for example the number zero uh, the number zero you could just write down zero over one right zero over one is just a zero okay if they say hey what's negative what's the number negative three negative three can be written over uh negative three over one which is a rational number but you don't need the one so negative three goes down to the integers right so you always have to take it down to the base subset that it belongs to okay that's what rational numbers are what are irrational numbers what are these guys well if these guys are numbers you can write as fractions of integers these guys are numbers you cannot write as fractions of integers can not write as fractions of integers okay what are numbers you cannot write as fractions of integers pi is one the root of any prime number is an irrational number it doesn't end and it doesn't terminate right so pi for example is 3.1415 I believe dot 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 so there's no pattern beyond this right it doesn't repeat rational could be 3.14151 all repeating which would mean 1415 1415 that would be an era uh, would be a rational number if it doesn't there is no pattern it doesn't repeat it's an irrational number okay <laughs> my poem's coming up okay that's what the real number set is now why is this why is this important how does this play out let me show you where some of these boundaries occur and what they mean okay interesting a very convenient table i think i'm starting to remember the school curriculum nice now i'm going to erase these guys our sets our worlds our villages that we created okay Let's take these guys down. What you can ask yourself is this. Let me 
take this number out too so people don't think it's a magic number right i got a new new thing right you gotta wash the other one so so you ask yourself what's the big deal so what we went from one two three all the way up to infinity to zero one two three all the way up to infinity what's the big deal why have a boundary why have this line here going from here to here right why not just write it down as call it whole numbers right what's the big deal it's just one number it's just a number zero well here's the big deal the number zero is huge gigantic enormous if the number zero didn't have the properties that it does right there's two main properties that the number zero has okay if it didn't have those properties then mathematics would not be what it is and the limitations of mathematics would not be what they are right here's the thing with zero what this is why we make a distinction as soon as we were able to define the number zero and i believe it was someone in india that defined the number zero okay here's the problem with zero the problem with zero is is the limitation of mathematics is the only as far as i know the only limitation of mathematics is we cannot divide by zero so this step from here to here introduces two things number one no dividing by zero the universe explodes when we divide by zero okay it is an impossibility according to the mathematics that we know in this realm that we exist in in the realm of mathematics the most powerful language that we've been able to come up with to try to understand the world around us okay even this amazingly powerful language right the most used language on earth between humans and humans humans and machines and machines and machines right with in this language that we're able to use to send people to the moon to put satellites into orbit to send satellites outside of our solar system right with this language that we've been able to come up with we can't do one thing we can't divide by zero right no dividing by zero okay limitation that's a huge boundary by the way huge boundary here's the other power of mathematics and by the way there's a video i put out um, called if you do chicho uh, travel at the speed of light why we can't travel at the speed of light chicho chicho why we can't travel or oh, i'm just gonna say speed of light chicho speed of light let me find it for you that way i'll link it up here's the video okay for those of you in chat if you want to keep track of this and let me link it up in chat and i'll provide in the description of this video once we load this this thing up okay in that video i go through okay explaining how i finally was able to understand why we can't travel at the speed of light is because we get a division by zero in einstein's uh, paper on the electrodynamics of moving bodies right if you've if you've ever gone to school or if you ever watched science fiction if if you haven't had your head in the sand for the last 50 years or 80 years or 100 years you would have heard that we can't travel at the speed of light it's a limitation that we have in physics in this in this physical life that we live what we can understand now in science fiction you got something called warp speed where you can bend space or whatever it is right okay now the reason we can't travel the speed of light is because in the equations that einstein presented in the paper called electrodynamics of moving bodies if 
we traveled at the speed of light, we get a division by zero in the equations, and the world universe explodes. Boom. That's it. <laughs> Simple as that. Okay. Now, this is the problem with zero, right? Explains to us the limitations of mathematics. Here's the power of zero, too. The power of zero allows us to solve equations. Power of zero. Uh, zero. Allows us to, let's just put it here, solve equations. Right? How does it allow us to do that? Here's how. If we have simple equations, if we have just one variable equations, for example, x plus 2 is equal to 0 or equal to 8, then you subtract 2, subtract 2, you get x is equal to 6. That's easy, right? x is equal to 6. Well, as we evolve, right, human beings evolve, as we evolve, right, we start to deal with more complex problems in our lives, right? So, we get more complex equations in our lives. So for example, let's assume we have the following equation. x squared plus 5x plus 6 is equal to 0. Now for us to be able to solve this, we can't just move these guys around. If we move these guys over there, we're going to get x squared is equal to negative 5x minus 6. But to solve an equation means get x by itself. Right now, how are we going to get x by itself? We can't just do it by adding and subtracting and stuff like this. What we end up doing is we do something called factoring, right? We ask ourselves, what are two numbers that multiply to give you 6, add to give you 5? And you can break this thing up. Here, let me show you, show you how this works, the mindset behind it, right? You can break this thing up and go, oh, this can be broken up into x plus 3, times x plus 2 right so we got two things multiplied together together to give us zero okay yeah lost uh, 69 69 69 the problem is for sure you can do that but you still can't be able to get x by itself so for example uh law said we could do this with this equation right we could factor out an x here and we got x plus 5 plus 6 is equal to zero the problem with this is we still have to solve for x, right? This goes to there. But how do you get x by itself? You got two x's here. It doesn't work, right? And I'll show you this. I'm going to keep this. I'll show you where the thing occurs, right? So here's the power of zero. This Keep this in mind, okay? Power of zero. Power of zero is this. Power of zero tells us this. And by the way, we got to... We gotta, we gotta, we got a video on this so if you do chicho power of zero let me get that for you as well power of zero okay i put out a full-on video just on this the power of zero because it's an extremely important concept right without this power we couldn't solve complex equations it'd be impossible right here's the link power of zero payapa thank you very much for hosting Doop. well hold on let me get get myself back to where we're supposed to be hey where'd that go no come on she show my might see it. So check this out. This is the power of zero, right? And that video goes through it. It's like a 45 minute video going through it. But we're gonna do a speedy Gonzalez style, right? This is the power of zero. A times B times C times D times E times F times as many things as you want equals zero. How can you have a whole bunch of stuff multiplied together to give you zero? How is that possible? How could you have two things? A times B equals zero. How could you multiply two things to give you zero? Well, the only way that's possible, 
the only way that's possible is if at least one of them is zero. If at least, and at least is important, at least A, B, C, D, E, or F, at least one of them is zero, right? We don't know which one is zero or which one could be zero, so we set them all equal to zero. So we say, oh, in this situation, a can equal zero, B can equal zero, C can equal zero, D can equal zero, E can equal zero, and F can equal zero. That's the only way that's possible, or a combination of all those, right? So it could be A and C are equal to zero, and B, D, E, and F can be whatever they want to be. It doesn't make a difference. Whatever number you have times zero is zero, right? That's the only way it's possible. This is the power of zero. Why is it the power of zero? Because zero is the only number that works with. You can't say, hey, how is it possible to have A, B, C, D, E, F times together to give you two, right? If you have that, you can't say, oh, the only way that's possible if at least one of them is two. That's not true, right? You can't say, oh, the only way it's possible if one of them is two. That is absolutely not true, right? You could make a2 and the rest 0 and you end up getting 0 not 2 you can make 1 2 all the other ones 1 except for f and make f a gazillion and you get a gazillion like it doesn't it doesn't work right if you make all of them 2 it's just 2 2 2 2 2 4 8 16 32 64 that equals 64 so it doesn't make sense right the only way this is possible is if at least one of them is zero, right? If this thing is equal to zero and at least one of them is zero. Well, that's the way we end up solving this equation, right? We just took something that we couldn't break down and factored it into two things multiplied together to give us zero. That means we can split it up and set each one equal to zero x plus 2 is equal to 0 so x is equal to negative 3 and x is equal to negative 2 so if we plug in x is equal to negative 3 for x in this equation this side equals 0 same with negative 2 right now check this out over here we had someone I forget who it was say oh let's factor it like this let me rewrite this right? I should have moved this over a little bit so we had a little room but I'll try to write it so you can see it you can factor out an x from here, and you're going to have x plus 5, and then you got plus 6 is equal to 0, right? Here, let's draw a line here so we don't get confused about this, right? Well, what we can do is, if we want to continue to solve this using this, move the 6 over, it becomes negative 6. So we got x times x plus 5 is equal to negative 6. So we got two things multiplied together to give us a negative 6. Is it true that either x is equal to negative 6 or x plus 5 is equal to negative 6? Absolutely not. You can't say, oh, this means that either x is negative 6 or x plus 5 is equal to negative 6. So this would be x is equal to negative 11 and x is equal to negative 6. That's what we would get if we did this, right? Well, if you plug in negative 6 for x here, you're not going to get this side equal to 0. It's not going to happen, is it? Negative 6 squared, negative 6, here, watch this, negative 6 squared plus 5 times negative 6 plus 6. Well, negative 6 squared is 36. 5 times negative 6 is negative 30. 36 plus negative 30 is 6. 6 plus 6 is 12. It doesn't work, right? It doesn't work. Oh no, not Joe. Thank you very much for the bits. And someone else was doing some bits, so thank you very much. If I'm not noticing it, and thank you for the subs, and thank you for, for the follows and stuff. But when, when I'm doing a little bit of mathematics, I like to uh, make sure we don't lose the train of thought, because if I get distracted, sort of sometimes lose my train of thought game. Okay. Does that, is that clear? So check this out. What just happened? And by the way, you can expand this to huge functions, right? If we do this, for example, here, you could do this. I'm not going to write down the polynomial thing uh, for it, but if you, you could have this, x plus 2, 3x minus 1, 2x plus 1. Let's put an x up front. 
uh, 5x minus 1 is equal to 0. Well, you got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 things multiplied to give you 0. So you can set each one equal to 0, right? x is equal to 0, x plus 2 is equal to 0, 3x minus 1 is equal to 0, 2x plus 1 is equal to 0, and 5x minus 1 is equal to 0. So this is x is equal to 1 over 5, x is equal to negative 1 over 2, x is equal to 1 over 3, x is equal to negative 2, and x is equal to 0. So whatever function this creates, it's a polynomial function, those would be the solutions for that polynomial function. Crazy! We couldn't do this if we didn't have this power of zero, right? That's why we have a boundary between natural numbers and whole numbers. It's pretty important. It's huge. It's gigantic. Really, it's, it's humongous, right? Wow! Things we cannot do with zero, and as soon as we get introduced to something, now we can solve equations. Very cool, very cool. The fundamental theorem of algebra is exactly that a, a degree n polynomial can be factored in n linear factors. Yeah, razor kill, how are you doing? Only possible if if you use complex numbers. Yeah, we need the complex numbers as well, right? So some of these things might not have a solution, right? Now, that's the reason we have a distinct boundary between natural numbers and whole numbers. That's the reason we came up with the concept of whole numbers. Why do we have this? Whole numbers to integers. Integers. Negative whole numbers. Well, negative whole numbers introduce, or negative, well, negative whole numbers introduce another problem in mathematics. And that's why we have this boundary, right? There's something called they call it they used to call it imaginary numbers the reason they called it imaginary numbers is because from what i understand race hill knows the history of mathematics better than i do and so do a few other people i think but the way i understand it the reason we called things imaginary numbers i'm going to show you what they are is because mathematicians used to think that was a byproduct of the mathematics they didn't realize what imaginary numbers meant or if they existed in the real world later on we found out that imaginary numbers were something that was part of a reality so they start calling it complex numbers right and the issue here is this okay the boundary between whole numbers and integers let's call this the boundary between natural here let's write it out properly so it goes in the right direction natural numbers to whole numbers right well what's this boundary between whole numbers and integers the boundary between whole numbers and integers, think about it this way. It introduces complex numbers. Risico. A complex number is a number of the form a plus bi, where a and b are real and i is the imaginary unit. So basically here, I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you guys what that is, how we write it out, right? But ask yourself this. So basically here, I'm going to say for the boundary here, it introduces the concept of complex numbers. So introduction, intro production of the concept of complex numbers and those numbers are a plus b i right where a and b are the element of um, are the element of the real number set and i is defined as the square root of negative one okay now, what does that mean? Well, check this out. Was first used for solving degree three polynomials. Is that where it was used first? That's cool. And degree three polynomials are x cubed plus something, something. Degree three polynomials could be something like this. F of x is equal to x cubed plus two x squared plus one x plus two, right? That's a uh, polynomial to degree three, right? Cubic. Uh, polynomial I guess you can think about it that way but for sure that's what it would have been that's right right that would have been one of the first places you encountered but basically you can think about it this way how to derive the value of I here's here's where I or complex numbers comes in now ask yourself what's the square root of 4 right what's the square root of 4 question 
what's the square root of 4? Now, square root means that you're looking for two numbers that are identical. Well, a thing to note is that negative 1 has two distinct square roots. Negative 1 has two distinct, plus or minus, yeah, 2. two. That's half your answer, by the way, lost, right? Because in the square root symbol here, you're really asking yourself, break down 4 into two numbers that multiply to give you 4. Yeah, plus or minus 2, right? So two numbers that multiply to give you 4 are 2 times 2, right? 1 times 4, negative 1 times negative 4, and negative 2 times negative 2, right? Let me write this bigger. Negative 2 times negative 2. So those are the combinations you can have, right? Square root says, if you find two numbers inside the square root symbol that are identical, you can bring them out as a single, right? So you can write the square root of 4 either as square root of 2 times 2 or square root of 1 times 4 or square root of negative 1 times negative 4 or the square root of negative 2 times negative 2. Now these two aren't identical, so they're irrelevant. So we can just take them off the board, right? So let's take these guys off. How do you like my little eraser thing? <laughs> More precise. So we can say with two numbers identical, square root of 4 can be, you can break it down into 2 times 2 or negative 2 times negative 2. And square root means if you have two things that are identical, you can bring them out as one thing, right? So you grab this thing, bring it out, and it's just 2 on the outside, and inside you got nothing. So it's just 2. You can grab two negative twos, bring them out as negative two. You got nothing left on the inside, so it's negative two, right? So square root of four is plus and minus two. I'm going to erase this. We need the space, right? I'm going to erase this. So square root of four is plus or minus two, right? Plus or minus two. Well, ask yourself this. Question B. What's the square root of negative four? Well, negative 4, we're looking for square root, right? So we don't care about 1 times 4 or negative 1 times 4 and stuff like this. For real numbers, the square root of A is typically defined as the positive number, which squares to A. For complex number, it's not as easy to define the square root, but there are ways to do it. Isn't, is there? Okay. Thanks, Racer Kill. So check this out. Square root of negative 4. So we'll forget about the 1 and 4 multiply together to give you 4, right? But we can do this. We can say square root of 4 can be negative 2 times 2, right? Or it could be 2 times negative 2. But there, these numbers aren't identical. So we can't just grab a negative 2 and a 2 and bring it out as positive 2 or negative 2. It doesn't work, right? So what can we do with this? What we can do is say, okay, we want to create two identical numbers. So separate the negative from the two. You can multiply any number by one and not change it, right? So we could say square root of negative four, if you break down four, it's two times two times negative one, right? Then what you could do is say, oh, 2 times 2, those are identical. I can bring these guys out as a 2, right? And inside the square root symbol, we got negative 1. So we got the square root of negative 1, right? And there are infinite number of numbers that behave this way, right? Square root or even root of any negative numbers is the root of that number times square root of i. Now, because this occurs an infinite number of times, we have a special name for the square root of i, and we call it uh, square root of negative 1, and we call it i, right? So we can say define i right here as a square root of negative 1, so this just becomes 2i, right? So why is this boundary between whole numbers and integers so important? because it introduced the concept of complex numbers. 
imaginary numbers at the time but later on we find out it's complex numbers which is crazy cool wow we might as well create a new subset and call that integers because it's a huge leap in human evolution in human thought human understanding right crazy cool crazy cool right okay what else we got in this real number set what else we got in here let's take a look at something called prime numbers okay an important thing uh, with complex numbers is that solutions to polynomials with complex coefficients will always have complex solutions ah oh, really okay cool that's super cool to know as well so basically when you had a polynomial if you had a complex number in there you're always going to have a complex solution which isn't true for real numbers obviously which isn't true for real numbers obviously but real numbers can the polynomial can jump into the complex numbers is it only going to be complex numbers racer kill by the way polynomial complex coefficients will always have is it have complex solutions only or will they also have real solutions i'm assuming they also have real solutions right is that true now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna erase this stuff okay because we're gonna need the space to talk about something called prime numbers sure but a real number is also a complex number but a real number is also a complex number yeah uh, as long as B is zero right is that what you're talking about when B is zero it could be expressed as a complex number is that true is that right racer code well wait until he answers that yes that's what I mean B is zero yeah so as because you can set b zero and that's part of the real number set so the i disappears so you have your real number right which is cool which is cool let's take this down let's look at something called the prime numbers because prime numbers are really the driving mechanism behind the real number set so we haven't even got to the driving mechanism of the real number set yet crazy cool right that's how important this thing is 73 my favorite prime number is it nice what's my favorite number who wins the prize what's my favorite number <laughs> let's kill this Ch -ch -ch. 69 three no no there's somebody here with that number <gasps> death 420 you <laughs> you didn't guess my number <laughs> 420 I think it officially became my favorite number uh, a few streams ago. <laughs> Catholic tradition is 420, right? <laughs> is that stream usually slightly behind the chat or is it an issue on my end? Uh, is it? It could be. There could be. Well, yeah, there is usually chat in real if you're watching on Twitch. It takes a little delay before it pops up onto the screen here. Okay. Urine. It's very fast here. Is it? That's not prime. 73 is not oh two 243 no 243 is not prime have you ever seen carl monk video about math and ancient history i don't think so i don't think so now what's the driving force behind the real number set we're getting sun coming in here how far can it go hopefully it won't block this out most of it i got my by the way i got my someone said yeah, i shouldn't do this i got my umbrella set up here because we've got a skylight and the timing is uh it, the sun sometimes blacks out the board or whites out the board right he only asks his favorite number not his favorite yeah i'm my own favorite number not my favorite prime favorite is zero sam hit zero is a good number very very powerful number right so what are prime numbers what are prime numbers prime numbers numbers now prime numbers are numbers that can only be divided evenly and by one and themselves right so for example just imagine you have the following numbers from number 1 to 20 right 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 right i could ask you how many unique numbers do we have here right now 
Unique numbers, you can think of 20 as being a unique number if you want, but it's not. It's made up of prime numbers multiplied together to give you 20, right? So number one is a special number. It's not a prime number. Number two breaks down into two times one. Number three breaks down into three times one. Number four can be broken down into, we talked about it, one times four, four times one, uh, negative four times negative negative and all that jazz but we're talking about natural numbers for now we're only talking going to talk about positive numbers right there's only 120 but you can non prime though I I I say it's not unique I know people are gonna burn me for this some 20 must be unique no it's not unique 20 is made up of prime numbers multiplied together it's it's not a atom it's a molecule right so it's not an element if you want to think about it in chemistry right it's made up of elements right so think of prime numbers as your building blocks of nature right but they're building blocks of numbers okay so if you look at the periodic table of elements that's what prime numbers would be in mathematics and there's an infinite number of prime numbers right number four can be broken down to two times two. That's two prime numbers multiplied together to give you four. Number five is one times five, so it's a unique number. So what we're gonna do to make sure this is not messy, we're not gonna split any number that is just one times itself because that's the definition of a prime number, right? So what we're gonna do is just circle the ones that only break down into one times themselves. Prime numbers are certainly important in some fields of math, but they are also irrelevant in the, and also irrelevant in others for sure there must be right but they're really really important in all of mathematics in high school there's no doubt about it race kill right and they're ridiculously important in relation to the real number set right for other number sets and stuff like this and mm -hmm. very complex mathematics i'm pretty sure prime numbers probably don't have a huge part to play in it i haven't gone that level right one seven five seven thirteen yeah one is not a prime number we consider it just to be a unique number i'm not sure what the name for one is racer kill do you know what what they call one i just call it a special number uh, unique unique <laughs> so two is a prime number three is a prime number four is not five is six can be broken down to two times three seven is a prime number eight can be broken down to two 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 made up of prime numbers right Mary about math and ancient civilization per flood ID imagine imagine okay. nine is three times three ten is two times five you're noticing that these numbers if they're just multiplied together to give you prime give you their prime numbers multiplied together to give you that number these numbers are called composite numbers they're made up of prime numbers multiplied together identity unity but yes it's not a prime number for convenience space yeah for convenience basically i used to include it in my prime numbers but it's not right so unity identity okay all right so far cool and then you got 11 12 is 2 times 6 and 6 is 2 times 3 so it's just prime numbers multiplied together 13 is a prime number 14 is 2 times 7 15 is 3 times 5 16 is 2 times 8 8 is 2, 2, 2. So it's just 4 2s multiplied together to give you 16. Then it's gone. <laughs> Wait, 2 is not, it is not, is it? Yeah, 2 is a prime number for sure. 2 is the only even prime number because the only way you can multiply two natural numbers to give you 2 is 1 times 2, and that's the definition of prime number, right? Numbers that can only be divided evenly by one and themselves. Numbers that can be that can only be actually we should call it natural numbers natural numbers that can only be divided divided evenly by one and themselves apologies about my writing but from saying it hopefully you know what it says 17 is prime two times nine 3 times 3, uh, sorry, yeah, 3 times 3, 19 is prime, 20 is 2 times 10, 2 times 5, right? 
So from the number 1 to 20, we have 20 numbers, but we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 building blocks, right? 9 prime numbers. Okay. Catholic traditionalists, primes are very important in a number of computer science applications, cryptography, hashing, tax scheduling, etc. Yeah, like for example, right now, there's no way we could have been streaming right if we didn't have prime numbers because prime numbers are the key building blocks of all everyone's passwords okay prime numbers is the reason by the way correct me if i'm wrong uh those of you who know this level of mathematics much better than me right but prime numbers is the reason we're able to do banking online prime numbers is the reason why we have pass passwords why we can have secure communication right prime numbers are it okay did you post the video link in discord Ch -ch -ch. yeah nice uh, tasty you're talking about the same thing you're pushing this thing by the way so i would recommend you don't push it too far because you might get timed out because you're totally off topic talking about this stuff right so if you want to share information we have a discord page go to our discord folder math folder and post it you're very welcome to share information right but if you're trying to hijack a discussion it becomes silly okay awesome will do thank you awesome uh there are other ways uh, to crypt but you're kind of right there are other ways to crypt yeah yeah i, I want to learn some of that stuff man i for some reason i'm really interested in that stuff there is a reason for it by the way credit card numbers are prime secure yeah and by the way as soon as we get quantum computing kiss your security goodbye quantum computing rolled out on a mass scale then no password is secure anywhere right i'm pretty sure about that but again people can correct me if i'm wrong on that deal right so prime numbers are the building blocks of all the real numbers that's what we get from this right prime numbers are the building block of the real number set and why are they important well they come into play here between rational and irrational numbers they help us reduce fractions right right and i but no i can't right so any root of any prime number quantum computing is necessary for the true free exchange of information it's it will the problem is it's gonna be rolled out and only a it's going to be not available to me and you it's going to be initially only available to the certain small sector of society they're too slow yeah quantum computing that yeah thank you very much Graham. i was about to hop in there <laughs> chicho uh the trash man chicho could you use quantum computing to encrypt at a more complex level also i believe so you must be able to right or is it a laws of mathematics thing? i you know what once quantum computing comes in i think what's going to happen is uh, uh you can throw the rule book away we really don't know what's going to happen we really don't okay thank you very much catholic traditionalists makes sense using prime numbers keeps fractions and ratios simplified by their nature exactly utah jazz right there are algorithms which are better against quantum computer methods. Is there a race to kill? The only piggy, how are you doing? What's up? What's up? Talking about the real number set and prime numbers. Sir, how can we get a negative number from a, from prime numbers? How can we get negative numbers from prime numbers? You multiply by negative one. Remember, one is a special number, right? This guy here is a special number. Or uh, what did you call it? What did you call it, race? Racer kill. Uh, you called it unity. What did you call it? I forgot what you called it. The thing is that quantum computer algorithms are more efficient at some things. Prime factorization is one thing. Okay. So basically, what happens is because there is, and by the way, the reason that prime numbers are used for encryption, okay, secure communication, is because there are an infinite number of prime numbers. And no one's been able to, and from what I understand, the, 
the proof is out there that you there's no pattern to prime numbers right mm -hmm. so prime numbers there's no pattern to when they appear right so whenever you find a prime number there's a huge number of prime numbers have been discovered but there are new prime numbers being discovered all the time and those new prime numbers are unique things that we discovered it's like finding a brand new element in the world right you just found a new prime number incredible right it's very important very important unit so prime numbers are the units right quantum convenience seems dangerous seems dangerous elder god i agree with racer kill i think there are ways to tie up systems enough to secure things but if you really want to want to be secure you can continue to store our data on local systems and find 24 floppy disk grab unit uh would that change the game of bitcoin farming i believe so i believe so uh bust uh Busterton, Busterton, uh, or bust. I believe it's going to change the game for a uh, Bitcoin and uh, mining. I'm not a hundred percent sure on it, but from one of my understanding, it's going to change the game, right? So the question is, how is it going to change the game? It would be like inflation in Zimbabwe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if it becomes too easy, wouldn't the value crash? Yes, and that is the thing, uh, trash man. Is negative to prime no uh, Gina we don't consider negative numbers to be prime negative numbers two is a prime negative two is the prime number times negative one right so we don't I, racer can uh, uh, clarify this or Catholic traditionalists uh, but you don't have negative primes you just have positive primes basically prime numbers are natural numbers that can only be divided by uh, evenly by one in themselves not just integers right so natural numbers so we kick it down all the way to the bottom right it does follow a general trend uh prime numbers it's not exact though it's not exact right there's twin primes and stuff like this actually a unit is a number which has an inverse the identity identity is one ah i think that oh is that what it is so what no that couldn't be it i'm thinking something else i like the carl oh dude nice <laughs> great minds i have to admit that the fact that prime numbers are infinite just hurt my brain yeah they're infinite and unpredictable right there are certain patterns i guess there are certain things that you can sort of get in the right ballpark but you still have to uh, what do you call it uh, force it right rigor right all right thank you my pleasure kind of yes but usually is defined as the positive number yeah uh, gina that's the way I understand it as well for prime numbers. Basically, I have to, I have just started looking at uh, things like lattice based cryptography. Oh, Catholic traditionalists! Oh, you're getting me excited. I wish I was there, man. I wish I was there. There are an infinite number of prime numbers, but prime numbers are infinite. Doesn't mean anything. Oh, okay. Let's rephrase that. There are an infinite number of number of prime numbers but prime numbers are infinite doesn't mean that. okay cool right so i worded it slightly wrong okay you touch us yeah it just seems wrong <laughs> two is a prime number i must write this down and it is the only even prime number so it makes it even super special right but my marine is fighting it i know it's because it's so nice it's a couple it's two it's even how could it be a prime number if it's even but it is right but it is which is fantastic but the number of prime numbers below x is asymptotically to x oh really i didn't know that race to kill that's a very famous theorem called a prime number theorem oh i must have read this some time ago but i totally forgot about it so the number of prime numbers below x is asymptotically x over log x so it's a function it becomes asymptote so the number of prime numbers as you on a cartesian coordinate system go up really fast there's a lot of prime numbers initially right but then it becomes asymptotic so think of it this way for us to be able to create the number one to 20 we need nine numbers we need one 
two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. With these nine numbers, well, not even these nine numbers, with these, with one, two, three, four numbers, we can create the numbers up to 20, right? Or up to 20, there are only nine prime numbers, right? So there's a handful of prime numbers all the way up to 20. If you go to 100, there might be a couple of dozen prime numbers, not even, right? If you go to 1,000, there might be a couple of dozen or a thousand way less than a hundred prime numbers right if you go to ten thousand maybe you're breaking a hundred prime numbers if you go to a hundred thousand maybe you're into a few hundred prime numbers right if you go to a million numbers maybe you're into a couple of thousand prime numbers right so just imagine from the number one to number one million there's a million numbers but you could generate all those million numbers by a few thousand numbers so that right there you don't need a million database you can crunch all that down to a thousand database few thousand database so it makes it a lot smaller it makes it more manageable right incredibly powerful razor kills are gods like razor kill stop making my brain hurt fun you could think think it, it in terms of probability if you pick an integer in the interval 1 to x there's there's a probability 1 over log x that it is a prime number ah cool 1 over so that's, oh okay okay oh i don't want to graph this i don't want to graph this i want to have this up uh, so it's like the opposite of exponential uh logarithms yeah in large part right special type of exponential anyway is that why they work so well for password protection yeah exactly you have to go through so many numbers to find primes so many numbers to find primes credit card security again credit card security again right super cool stuff super cool stuff right this is actually what we just went through is actually more in depth than what I did in my real number set the first videos I put out but I did link this up with um, uh, I think a couple of years later I created another uh, video or set of videos talking about the square root of prime numbers and the power of zero and irrational number not irrational numbers uh, well irrational numbers but um, integers and uh, imaginary numbers or complex numbers uh, so linked it up in that way as well when we're talking about square roots and radicals and stuff like this so it's pretty cool it's pretty cool super cool stuff i still don't know what you're with stand for i have no idea what that means 15 is not prime 15 is not prime because 15 can be broken into three times five so it's made up of two two prime numbers multiplied together Oh, whole number set. Uh, know what your whole stands for. Whole number set is just the natural numbers plus the number zero. Right? Yeah, natural numbers plus the number zero. All numbers ending in an even number, not prime then. Yes. There, there are no even prime numbers. The only even prime number is two. Because any even number can be divided by two. Right? log x grows slowly so prime numbers become more rare but the rarity doesn't grow that fast but the rarity doesn't grow that fast okay what is zero prime uh zero factor is one well zero factorial is one isn't it i'm pretty sure it's one you're catching me at a time when i'm thinking about this <laughs> expect two sure and five would x over log x be a ratio yeah for sure any fraction is a ratio sorry 1 a.m brain minus brain equals fried <laughs> yeah any a ratio is just any fraction i think a lot of mathematicians say zero is a natural number do they did they put it in here i've always learned it here as a whole number gina well it's number divided by another but it's likely not going to be rational oh did you say ration no re ratio yeah ratio jives that okay so prime numbers 
can't be made from two evens and any numbers times itself yeah prime numbers can only be made up when you're multiple if you're taking two numbers to multiply to get your number if the only two numbers that you can multiply to get that number is one and that number is considered a prime if any other two numbers multiply to give you that number other than one and the, and the number itself then it's not a prime it's called a composite number she shows right whole numbers include zero naturals doesn't yeah yeah fractions and ratios are just different ways of expressing the same thing yeah but their their interpretation is different fractions are part of a whole ratios is a comparison between two things right ratio kill uh good with number patterns but not math really yeah elder god is good with patterns problem solving is crazy fast ratio kill zero being natural or not or not depends if you read a book you're going to have to check what uh convention that author uses okay cool good to know i actually didn't know that um there are mathematicians that consider zero to be part of natural numbers i always i always associate it with the whole numbers it's just an introduction because it's such a huge uh step in human knowledge evolution right but it won't be a constant right because x moves yeah it won't be a constant are you talking about uh gina the prime numbers increasing proxy king i think now has changed now zero comes in natural numbers oh does it oh i'm too old school then i'm too old school then trash man fascinating how these things can case change through interpretation yeah really you taught jazz also i got c's in high school math and never took math in college so i'm very out of my element utah jazz there's the c's really don't mean too much you might have understood the mathematics really well it's just not the not you couldn't perform in the tests that they give they were giving you right <laughs> real alan gated musk it is 1 a.m oh god you got lost in the stream a oh, funny learning balance if you include zero then you get a, a monoid under addition so it is nicer algebraic structure okay cool i feel like i keep on getting little bits of understanding but my brain is mostly <laughs> fraud what is that os frog <laughs> trash man sometimes people write n underscore zero for including zero but yeah you're going to have to check for every source not every person uses the same notation yeah I took a college course in math two years ago and the naturals numbers included zero still cool we see can you earn money finding undiscovered prime numbers I believe so I believe so there's notoriety notoriety for sure and uh, there from what I understand racer kill probably knows this um there's uh, uh there are websites where they give you money for proofs i'm pretty sure there's going to be a website that you can generate money by finding primes gina yeah i was thinking maybe x over log x would trend to a constant value example fubinucci yeah it would continue to increase though it still continues to increase but very slowly right i will argue for the side till the death no perhaps if you find newest largest one yeah new and eraser kill if they found the largest one i'm pretty sure there are prime numbers all the way up to the largest ones that haven't been discovered yet right or are there algorithms just going through just just grunt just forcing it trying to find prime numbers so the largest prime number no because there would be people trying to find prime numbers jumping the algorithms right so there must be unknown prime numbers uh, that are smaller than the largest known prime number i don't think it's bounded but it grows slowly it grows slowly 
Hi everyone, hope you're all doing fine. Crazy bro Athen, how are you doing? Utah Jazz, discovering new prime numbers seems pretty similar to discovering new digits of pi. X grows much faster than log X regarding the asymptotic, right? So log X, log X is just a Y value of it really, but X grows much faster oh p versus np 34 to 57 viewers low high this stream ah nice elder god <laughs> fun we're kicking up closer to the 75 average right funny twitch racer kit well there are so many primes there are like billions or trillions of prime numbers below the largest one we know okay so it doesn't it hasn't gone sequentially there's billions or trillions below the largest one we know really it's no use having a list of that no no use at all crazy bro Athens doing fine thanks for asking hope you also doing fine in these weird times of changes yeah doing fine I'm doing much better than most uh, there are people that are in major turmoil areas so I wish them the best right there are some people that have to completely reevaluate their existence because their world is shattering right so yeah being knowing what's going on politically economically in the world is a stabilizing force is a stabilizing element in your life which is why i push um, the concept of politics economics and specifically looking looking at our world through the realm of mathematics to make people more anti-fragile right vc i wish i i wish you could answer that question what did vc ask is p equal to np is p equal to np hmm. risica well it looks more like it's in the tens of millions of primes below the largest the point stands though the point stands though so it's not trillions it's tens of millions of primes most likely below the largest prime known very cool so tens of millions of unknown primes below the largest prime known right math best place to rest <laughs> fun 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 stuff gang great question by the way we hadn't done the real number set for a long time we just went off on it could it could it possible to develop a computer program that could on that could find unknown prime numbers people have been trying to work on that forever and there are programs running i believe trying to find new prime numbers but it's more rigor there's no pattern to it right so it's trial and error and zooming into an area and trying to find the primes right did you see what spain did they start to give fixed income to two million poorest people of spain and they want to cover whole populations so that everyone get a fixed income that would be cool actually even though i'm against universal basic income by the way because right now it's a solution right long term anyway i'm not for it for the long term because right now is a band-aid solution to a lot of the problems of the world because of centralization of power and uh, theft <laughs> through wall street but in the long term it's enslavement right have you ever taught the colts conjecture to anyone no gina i don't i don't even know what the colts conjecture is maybe there's a question to racer kill vc prime factorization is in the np class of computer problems but unclear if it's np hard i have no idea what that means race secure actually all big primes have been of the form uh two to the power of p minus one two to the power of p and then minus one because it's easier to prime check such numbers ah so these are some uh some methods that people have come have been have come up with to check to see if a number is prime once the number is could be 
nominated as candidate of a prime, right? Is that it? Also, it can be shown that if a number 2, n to, two to the power of n minus 1 is prime, then n must be prime. So it's uh, twin primes. They're twin primes. Is that correct? Isn't there approximately da, 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 below largest menses prime? Oof. Learning balance. Cole's conjecture also sometimes referred to as uh, 3n plus 1 problem. I got to look into that, Catholic traditionalist. I was talking about the number of primes below, not numbers. The tens of millions. Have you ever seen the movie Contact? Yeah, for sure. I liked it. Uh, Utah Jazz. I, there was some Hollywood aspects to it that I didn't like, but it was a fun concept. A pot point uh, in it is that extraterrestrial communicate with us using prime numbers. Yeah. And I think that's uh, one thing that has been part of science fiction for a long time, Utah Jazz, right? That, you know, a lot of people say, oh, if, uh, in like through... Um, uh, there's science fiction out there that says if we encounter aliens it'll be through music that we'll be able to communicate and stuff but it's not really music it's prime numbers i think um what do you call it? close encounters of third kind also had prime numbers but with notes or whatnot right but it, it's pretty much i don't know accepted or believed fact believed uh theory that when if we encounter alien species that the only way we're going to communicate with them is through prime numbers right through mathematics right. thanks for the informative lesson looking forward to the next set of streams nice sam hit enjoy it enjoy this very much i did so am i so learning balance da -da over that is what i computed wolfram haha <laughs> i think you're right thanks how many zeros is that Ah, Wolfram I like that website by the way fun fun conversations gang so what do we say should we call the stream that was fantastic discussion for Thursday afternoon or Thursday evening depending on where you are or Friday morning depending on where you are by the way gang thank you for the subs thank you for the follows apologies if I didn't catch them all and I know I didn't catch them all Utah Jazz of course when primes be different if we didn't use a base 10 number system and what are the chances that space aliens would use that maybe i'm overthinking uh, i don't think uh, base 10 matters really does it racer kill would know oh that's a fuck time <laughs> that's how many zeros after us are there stream schedule coming up i haven't scheduled anything uh trash man right now i'll probably announce the next set of streams in the next couple of days but i'm thinking of thank you very much for the bits uh jives zan i'm thinking of maybe doing a cooking stream on sunday but i don't know yet because i have to go shopping to get the supplies we need i want to make some dolmas right but uh, i need to go get ground beef and some other surprise and stuff supplies and i don't know if i'll have the time to do it uh, by sunday but i'm going to try to shoot for sunday maybe but if i announce it it's going to be tomorrow evening that analysis so the best i can do is maybe get people a one day warning or maximum two days warning okay it's completely unreasonable to have some list of them wolfram was the only reason i survived gcs math yeah i was born the prime year nice elder god no base doesn't matter yeah base shouldn't matter for prime numbers i was born on the even year yeah me too I'm very common. Me and you are very common racer killed. <laughs> I was born an odd year. You could probably guess which one. Utah, 1987. Hilarious. Is that a prime number? Is it a prime number? Prime, nice. Is it prime? Nice. Well, we take uh, apart Furman theorem. Furman theorem okay gang thank you for being here by the way fantastic conversation thank you for the help racer kill catholic traditionalists and everyone else that was helping in the mathematics thank you for your questions thank you for the conversations thank you for the subs thank you for the bits thank you for the follows 
If you want to follow this work, I'm on Patreon, patreon.com backslash chicho, C-H-Y-C-H-O. If you want to support this work, Patreon is a fantastic way to support this work. I don't put anything behind paywall. I will continue to share as much as I can for as long as I can. So if you want to follow this work, you can just follow through Patreon and get notifications as to what we're sharing. And if you do like what you see, and if you do have the funds, Patreon is a fantastic way to support this project. Goodbye, I want to see you next time. Great stream, great stream, trash man. Okay. We are live streaming this on Twitch, twitch.tv and .com backslash chicho live, C-H-Y-C-H-O-L-I-V-E. If you want to participate in these live streams, Twitch is where you want to be at. Okay. You too, Catholic traditionalists. Have a great rest of your day, folks. Be blessed, be blessed. I do announce these streams on Twitter, Gavs, Minds, VK, and Elo. And we share additional information there. And all the links will be in the description of this video. So if you want to follow this work, you can follow us through those platforms. Those are, those are the ones that I'm active in right now. A lot of the streams, we're going to upload the audio to SoundCloud as podcast. Right now, I'm not uploading the math streams or anything that involves visuals to SoundCloud. We might at some point, once I get caught up, with all the other streams that we want to load on soundcloud those streams and videos that we've shared over the last 14 years on youtube and over the last few years on BitChute, right so there's a lot of content to be loaded on soundcloud if you want to listen to these things uh what we're doing in audio format soundcloud is where you want to be at okay and i do upload these streams everything to BitChute, technical difficulties allowing okay and because of the censorship on youtube we're holding off on uploading certain things to youtube because we don't want to get deplatformed and get flagged by the algorithms that are trying to censor information okay so if you want to follow everything you want to subscribe to the bitchute channel and i'm totally okay if you want to watch these things on bitchute instead of youtube even though if youtube is monetized for us right not everything youtube keeps on demonetizing certain videos but if you are on youtube you want to uh, contribute support this work you can also join youtube membership and that is also a fantastic way to support this project as well as uh, following subscribing through twitch and joining in our patreon uh, page okay aside from that gang thank you very much for being here Thank you for everything. Mods, thank you for taking care of business. And I'll try to announce the next set of streams in the next couple of days. Um, maybe by Saturday I should have something up, I hope. And if we do, and if I do end up going shopping, I'll try to do a cooking live stream on Sunday, but no promises. Okay. Uh, aside from that, I hope you have a fantastic day, morning, evening, afternoon. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.